Hello, hello. Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I'm one of your hosts, Wesley LeBlanc, and we are joined by Kyle Hilliard. How you doing? Hello, how's it going? It's going. It's Friday when we're recording this, which means today is extra great. Um, and even greater because we are going to be talking about three cool games coming out on Steam Next Fest, which, if you aren't familiar, is a really cool thing that Steam does every year. Um, a lot of indie developers, sometimes AAA developers, but mostly indie, um, put up fun free demos of upcoming games you can check out. And so we have played three ahead of time. Uh, we're recording this on Friday, February 2nd. Steam Next Fest starts on Monday, February 5th and runs for a bit. Um, but yeah, we checked out three games ahead of time that we're going to be talking about today. And uh, we kind of just wanted to show them off because we liked them and they seemed cool, uh, both in premise and gameplay. And uh, also, yeah, if you like want to check them out yourself, you can do so uh, when Steam Next Fest actually starts. Um, so this first game is called Pepper Grinder, and it is one that uh, Kyle played. Uh, so tell me a bit about this. It's uh, It looks already very awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like right out of the gate, I can say I, I really like what I played. It's uh, it's a Devolver digital published game, and uh, I, I'm consistently impressed with them, man. Like I, they, yeah. they, 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 it's weird because like I, it's not necessarily like, you point to a game and you're like, that's a Devolver digital game. That's like, they have a specific tone and style. When it has that stamp on it, you're kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna pay attention to this because they haven't really steered me wrong yet. Maybe they have and I just yeah. have forgotten. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, this is Pepper Grinder, which like, I mean, you can see the gameplay. You're this uh, little character with a drill who uses the drill for all momentum. Like that, you know, there's, Moving there, like when you're on like a platform, you know, is about the only mm -hmm. time it, it feels sort of traditional. Otherwise, you're sort of moving through like this sand, at least in this area, uh, at a high speed. And you have like full control of your character. It's it's a weird thing to point to, but it's just what comes to mind, as these things do. Swimming in Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends, yeah. it, which mm -hmm. is like some of the best, maybe the best like swimming in a video game, period. <laughs> maybe? Yeah, I don't know. I, I I think I could commit to that today, um, but it kind of feels like that, uh, but even better because that's like the pure focus of the game. Yeah, it's um, uh, I mean, obviously, like Dig Dug comes to mind because of the sand and digging, but um, yeah, I'm especially old. being. Yeah, <laughs> true. Uh, I used to play Dig Dug on one of those like Walmart plug in joysticks that oh, you buy. Oh, yeah, plug and play. Of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, very cool. My dad was a fan as well. Um, but also Celeste, uh, specifically the momentum that you get when you, it looks like momentum, when you jump out of the sand. Yes. Um, which is like, I mean, Celeste is amazing and feels great for many reasons, especially its movement. Um, but yeah, there's something j just great about flying out of something and gaining momentum when you do it. Yeah, uh, launching. It's all about launching, you know? Yes, yeah. Um, and, and it does so, feel good, I can't confirm. Is it a is this a pepper grinder? Like, why is it called pepper grinder? I thought uh, I honestly thought we'd be playing as a seasoning or something. <laughs> I think I'm. I think it's my first called, time seeing it. I think it's called pepper grinder because drill dozer was taken. I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like it's a good name, but I don't know its relevance because, like, you know, you you grind a pepper grinder, you twist it which feels kind of drill like <laughs> in a way yeah. you know You're i don't really, really those pepper grinders yeah i don't know what it if thematically if it's like there's some story reason the, the demo at least doesn't really have a lot of story there's not really like dialogue or anything it's just like you crash you crash land on this island and this there's this like pir pirate character that seems to be a villain who like cut you know you're walking across a rope bridge mm. and they cut it and so you fall and then you just find this drill like where you fall and that was the extent of the story in the demo so i i don't really know how pepper <laughs> plays into it uh but it feels right which is the important part you know yeah <laughs> it's like yeah that's true this game's called pepper grinder i i trust you on that <laughs> so is it a uh a level based type of uh like i guess platformer yeah. actually i don't know what you would call this type of game yeah it's like but... a, just a platformer just like yeah it, it's level based like you can see here and stage clear like this is one of the, this is one of the levels one of the, yeah. one of the levels i only found three of the or two of the five hidden coins in that level um i mentioned what one, one of the reasons that this instantly appealed to me just seeing like the the sort of reveal of it uh, i mentioned drill dozer earlier 
I love that game, Drill Dozer. It's a Game Boy Advance game from Game Freak. It was like an early, early example of Game Freak making a game that wasn't called Pokemon. You know, Pokemon. They didn't start with Pokemon. Do that. Yeah. Yeah, but like you know, they made I think it was it like Wario, Wario's Woods and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. um, once they found Pokemon, they like locked into Pokemon. But they did make this game, and they've made more since the Drill Dozer for Game Boy Advance, and it's kind of reminiscent of this. You're a character with a drill who uses a drill for like to solve platforming puzzles and to like attack enemies and stuff like that. And I've always kind of been on the lookout, you know, for something kind of like that since I enjoyed Drill Dozer so much. So and this has like that vibe. It's a very different game, but like the idea of using a drill for like movement and momentum and, you know, action is cool and, and it yeah. works really well here. Is it um, like how challenging is it? Is it? I mean, it seems like it's not too difficult, and more about like exploring and getting all these coins and stuff. Uh, but yeah, did you? Is this so actually? Let me ask. Is this like the entire demo? Like, is this what we're watching? Is basically what you played, or just, is there more? Uh, this we. This is basically the entire demo. It's not a very long okay. demo. Um, okay, gotcha. And the challenge, it, it wasn't super challenging, but it's like one of those kinds of games that you can play like you play the first couple levels and and in this case certainly i'm like oh i like this this is cool i'm intrigued um but you i could see it it's like i could see how they could make this very challenging in the future yeah like they have these like core mechanics that they're establishing in these early levels i don't know if these are the actual first levels um video game demos are strange like that as we've learned over the years Wes it's like they yeah. don't always necessarily start you at the beginning they want to start you in a place where it's going to be the most fun so maybe that's you know level five or whatever um, yeah but uh yeah I could, I could see like I could just I can imagine that they would in integrate like new mechanics that would be weird and tricky like even these panels that I'm breaking is very puzzly and I could see it creating a lot of like instances where you are you know you have to figure out which order to hit them in in order to progress you know yeah um is there is there another game that has like a turnip or what's that like a beat that plant i feel like a, that looks kind of heart shaped um, that's like a hell mario item. 2 i guess um, or like i feel like heart shaped turnips in breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom are really valuable right like <laughs> yeah yeah they um fully restore you if you're they're cooked into a dish i believe or something like that. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but it was—it's um, one of those things. It's like such a video game thing where you, I saw that and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's a health item. I know, I know yeah. it's a health item. You don't need to explain that to me." <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's like the one food. I'm still convinced there's pepper in this game. I, I gotta know. I can't wait to find out why it's called pepper grinder. But now there's like a radish-looking thing. So maybe yeah, we are. Radish. Maybe yeah. we're cooking with something. And there's a salty pirate. It sounds like. Oh, um, yeah. I guess he was salty. So, I think I'm onto something. Uh. So this is an alien world, I assume, or maybe uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. It, like it really, like the story is just like you know, it's it's very in and out, right? It, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, it's just like a fantasy setting. I don't know, <laughs> right? Yeah, radishes. What? What, what, what do you need, Wes? Why, why are you asking all these questions? I need to know why this game is called Pepper Grinder. I feel like I've seen key art where there's like a. I honestly, before seeing this footage, I thought you'd play as a pepper grinder or like a. Like a why would you? Tables. Why would you think I, that? I don't know. Well, because they called it pepper. <laughs> I, that's, I'm joking, Wes. Of course, that's why you would think that. No, now, no. now you're pissing me off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. On this Friday morning, I'm making you angry. Uh, no, I I'm just, a, I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, reflecting or not. What's the word? Where you? Uh, I don't know the answers, and it's making, <laughs> and it's making me upset. Is what's happening. Um, I put you on the spot, and yeah, and now you're lashing out at me. Exactly. There we go. See, I like the, uh, hitting the panels to like kill enemies and stuff like that is fun. It's very satisfying to just run into those panels and cause yep. mayhem like like that, you know. And I um I wanted to at least show kind of like the last bit um because I it to me it's like oh this is this is what makes this game really cool. I I admit I it was my it's li this is me recording like literally my first playthrough. So apologies mm -hmm. if it's if you're yelling at the screen uh, for me to play better, and so I don't I don't do it perfectly, but it's the kind of thing that when you play through it, you want to do it perfectly, right? Because it's very, yeah. um, like 
almost rhythm based you know it's like if you're doing it well and you get into like a smooth rhythm it it feels really good right because it's all it's so focused on like movement and and maintaining momentum um that like it is yeah. very satisfying to do it well um which is where i see the game like becoming challenging is where it's like um uh like made, like doing those uh sort of platforming challenges perfectly yeah it seems like the kind of game where which is like my favorite type of platformer where you could if you're extremely amazing at a game you could go through a level without stopping really like yes. your moment like the whole especially with the way that like she's kind of sliding through the sand with the grinder um yeah, drill, drill this thing. i almost called it drill dozer uh this is <laughs> definitely one of those types of games that's like you could if you do it smoothly you're gonna it's gonna feel really good and look really cool yeah which is my type of platformer disney's yeah. illusion island was like a more uh a family friendly version of that in terms of challenge but i mean it's like a, a platformers i don't know i know celeste i mentioned earlier but like i feel like celeste either up to the game for platformers or just like put more developers on watch to like make amazing platformers because ever since then i feel like we've just been in not a renaissance but just a non-stop every year there's a great platformer to play and i love that yeah for sure yeah I, it's it, it, the, it celeste was like one of those games that was like hey we like these you know you can make these for us we'll, we'll play them. yeah you know <laughs> every time <laughs> yeah now release your second game um already please i'm ready for that one yeah uh um, i do i i email them frequently wes um frequently that's yes. a lie. but i did email them recently <laughs> saying like uh hey let's talk you know you and everybody else who wants to play that game, I'm sure. Yeah, all right. Well, I mean, I'd like to cover it. <laughs> I'm yeah, not just trying to yeah. get a build of it. Uh, oh, you don't do that? You don't just email developers asking to play their game? <laughs> no, I try to, you know, I just, yeah, I, I should, though. I should be like, ah, I'm not going to cover this, but I would love to play this. Just like, can I just have it? Can I just have this game? <laughs> Give it to me. Um, so I'm looking, this is, this team is, because uh, I know we're reaching the end of this demo here. It's R Eck um which yeah. i'm not familiar with as a developer but it is a devolver game which i do think as you mentioned earlier devolver kind of speaks to a certain quality oh wow oh wow You're yeah really see this is this it. is what i was talking about earlier where it's just like going 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 and it's like i didn't do it as smoothly as i should have but uh yeah very cool well that was pepper grinder it is due out sometime this year but no official release date so keep yeah. an eye on that and, and give it a go if you want and to touch um, touch quickly the the developer uh you know not a ton of history uh from those guys this yeah, seems to be their first that. thing so uh, but yeah tell me about this what are we looking at now wes so this is kameru uh a frog refuge it's k-a-m-a-e-r-u um so i'm not sure how to pronounce it but um, kind of switching up the vibes a bit uh this is uh one of those games that is becoming extremely popular on the vibes uh it's just like a chill cozy game and i know like okay. calling a game cozy is becoming uh i don't know i think we're using the word cozy too much for games now uh sometimes but this is like absolutely a cozy game uh both like visually and in terms of what you're doing it's very chill um and i played like a 15 minute demo we're gonna check out uh, like six or seven minutes here um but as the name suggests, it's you're building like a frog sanctuary, a frog refuge. Um, so what I'm doing here is uh, breeding frogs. And I learned a lot about these squares. I don't even remember what they're called in school. But I know that you use squares to determine genetics and DNA and stuff. As you can see, I'm not doing too well trying to create a new frog. Um, it looks like you're almost playing like a like a tic-tac-toe -tac -tac thing okay yeah so you are competing against a computer is that yeah kind of i'm competing against annabelle i guess she's like a scientist trying to help me breed uh the frog um and i'm about 10 minutes into the demo at this point and breeding a, a new frog was one of my objectives okay um but yeah so my next objective is to like raise your bio score which is kind of like your determination of how well your frog refuge is going so like your ponds, your plants, your bugs, and your total frogs determines that. Um, so, like, very cozy, very chill game, but still very much a, uh, I guess, like, a, not simulation, but like a management game, like one of those. I don't play these types of games too often, so I'm blanking on the, sure. the genre name. But, uh, yeah, like, your goal is to, you're kind of always doing something to make your refuge um, even better. Uh, 
And you can see here that I am going to need to build uh, a couple uh, ponds and uh, put more berry bushes. Um, and which... it's, it's it's focused like exclusively on raising frogs, right? This isn't like yes. a secret farming sim necessarily, right? No, this is like just frogs. I mean, I, I'm, That's I'm, cool. I I'm like the focus. making berries and reeds and like you cook and stuff and make berry jam and um, other things, but it's all in the uh, effort to make your uh, frogs and frog refuge happier. So like the reason I'm cooking right now is to get more money to build more ponds to attract more frogs. Okay. Um, yeah, it's got kind of a cool like paper cutout kind of style. Yeah, there's a there was a game called Exo Colonist that came out last year that had this a similar art style and I really like it. It's just yeah, very pretty. Really yeah, it feels good on the eyes. Um, but yeah, so what I'm doing here is uh, going back to this is like all right, so this is my normal refuge area um this is where i'm like trying to get frogs to come and uh live uh but this other area is like your marshland your like wetlands mm -hmm. and this is like a good spot to actually get frogs to appear um which we should see happen here in a bit and once frogs appear you can feed them bugs uh and that like after you feed them a certain amount of bugs at least early on it's like four bugs um you tame them and they become part of your refuge so you'll see them hanging out they won't leave and you can name them um for some reason i don't I've, i was struck that day to name them after different uh words for satan so if you see frogs named <laughs> beelzebub and lucifer <laughs> maybe i was just trying to like counter the vibes um wes we've but... all been there i we get it you don't have to explain yourself <laughs> it was one of those things where i'm like playing it and I forget that I'm also recording for an NGT and I'm, I'm like naming frogs Beelzebub and Lucifer and stuff and I was like oh yeah actually this is going to be uh, um, viewed by people no it's uh, good it's, it's nice to get a little insight into your psyche <laughs> yeah uh, tangent sometimes when I'm like previewing games and you have to name something I did this for Skull and Bones and NGT on our YouTube recently and I had a Ubisoft dev watching me and I had to name my ship and I didn't name it because it's just too awkward like you know, like, they're making a character, naming stuff. Like, I don't want to do any of that in front of people. Like, that's, I got to do that on my own. Um, so you get a little, yeah, you get a little peek into my mindset here. I like um, this, like, laser grid for cooking. Right? <laughs> I, yeah. I like, get one of those going at home. Targeting the, um, targeting the sunlight to uh, cook the food. Um, so the demo is, like, pretty short. Uh, it's not, uh, I don't know if this is my type of game necessarily, but I actually had a good time with it and I mostly wanted to highlight it because uh it's a type of game I know a lot of people will like I mentioned it in one of our morning meetings and a lot of people uh popped for it just on the name alone uh, a yeah. game where you raise frogs uh and I know it's, that I appreciate the focus you know it's like this genre and then you're focused on cute little frogs like that's that's smart yeah that's cool yeah and like the art style is is perfectly matching that like it's this pleasant is, it's pleasant yeah. as hell and so there's a lot of like different frogs. You can see here, I'm kind of trying to tame the ones that have arrived, but I'm out of uh, money and 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 um, food to feed them. But once you have tamed them, you can do, oh yeah, I'm doing it right here. Taking a picture and you add it to your frog decks. Um, I don't know if you've heard about this Pokemon game, but it's influencing a lot lately. <laughs> um, is that is that like Pal World? Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pal World. Yeah, Pal World is... Uh, <laughs> I think Pokemon's inspired by Power World or something like oh, that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I got to look more into it. Um, but yeah, it's just like a cute, cozy little game. It's not doing anything too wild, and I kind of appreciate that because the reason I don't play these um, management games is they often get way too stressful for me. And I don't know. I don't need to play games that are about stress and managing it because I. Uh, just do that in my life every day. I just learn to manage stress, so I don't need a game. Yeah, it's funny that I think you me. and I are probably the same that way, Wes. And that like Pepper Grinder is probably like the less stressful game, even though it's like yes, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that is. That's so strange. But yeah, something about managing meters and making sure I have enough of something to do something else uh, stresses me out. But uh, I do, I, I do really like the look of this game, and I like the frogs. Yeah, I think it's just like uh, with those types of games, you you have one objective and it's just to like keep going and stay alive. Whereas these types of games, you have to uh, manage like deadlines and uh, objectives further out. It's not just one goal. Um, right. And yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. 
I manage enough deadlines and stress in normal life, so I don't need to, I don't need frog deadlines added to the uh, <laughs> the mix. Um, but yeah, this is a this is Kameru Kama Kamaru. I don't know a frog refuge. Um, it has a Steam Next Fest demo uh, starting Monday, February fifth. If you want to check it out, and if you like these types of games, if you like cozy anything, I definitely recommend it because it's fun. And as someone who doesn't typically like these games, I still had a very good time. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's Camaro, a frog refuge. For our last game, um, we're gonna jump ahead to it's called Dystopica, and it is a cyberpunk city builder, but kind of keeping in, in trend with Kameru, it doesn't have any of the stressful elements that uh, keep me away from this genre. This is a, uh, I guess like free builder is what I would call it. It's not a city builder where you have to manage like traffic and taxes and economy. It's just put cool stuff down and make it look fun. Yeah, it's um, just make, it looks like it's, hey, why don't you make the opening scene of Blade Runner? Like, yeah, <laughs> yes, like, yeah, just that's cool. exactly it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, when the devs reached out, I mean, they mentioned cyberpunk and I was in because I am just a sucker for cyberpunk, especially visuals and ambiance and atmosphere. Um, I know you're not supposed to like cyberpunk, but they make it hard because it's just a cool, it's a cool thing. I want to live. When did they decide that? I love cyberpunk. I don't know. All the authors that write cyberpunk books and stuff are like, this is a warning of our future. And I'm kind of like, look, I might be down. I might be down to live in a city. <laughs> I might be down to live in a city like this. And I know that that's, you know. Yeah, I want it to look be, like but... this. I just don't want to, you know, live in it. I, I Like, if we could just have the aesthetic, uh, yes. and then, you know, the actual uh, life would be, you know, pleasant and nice. But we get cool... Yeah giant lights and the soundtrack is great that like stands out yes. to me right away i i um in like the last like five years or so i've all my my like listening to like spotify playlist is just all just background synth music you know yes. that i play while yeah. writing and stuff like i get my year-end spotify roundups and it's like your favorite band this year was you know uh, a virtual mage and I'm like yes. I, don't, I have no idea who that is that just plays in the background and it just makes my life better uh, so I love I'm already I'm like super on board for the soundtrack immediately yeah I didn't even post my um, Spotify rap this year because I listen to so much like lo-fi and background music that it's just like congrats Wesley you listened to 3,000 new artists this year <laughs> it's because I'm not listening to albums I'm just listening to uh, like random uh, lo-fi artists that play cyberpunk music. Um, Wes, I feel yeah. like we're learning a lot about each other in this video that we're like, I know, we I think share well. a lot of the same interests. We don't like cozy games as much. We love cyberpunk synth music. <laughs> we're just trying to, to, to chill and vibe out. Like that's, yeah, exactly. that's what it's about. I just want to um, look so, at billboards, man. I just want to look at cool ass billboards. <laughs> I unironically am that way. Like I am the people that I should not be like, I go to Times Square and I'm like, yeah, this is sick. I like all these lights and billboards. <laughs> we're, good, we're heading in the right direction here. Yeah, like advertise to me. Um, so you can see what I did is I built the city up and now oh, I'm cool. lighting everything. Uh, and again, this is like so chill, so easy. There's no, I don't even decide what advertisements and billboards and lighting is happening. It's just a matter of taking your mouse and moving it around and scrolling. Um, yeah, is and, there a goal or is it really just sort of creativity kind of software? So I I mean, the game is like definitely a creativity Ooh, this looks good. centered thing because at least in the demo, there is no goal. Like it is just you can't even like um, pick anything like right. you can pick. OK, I'm making buildings and then you can switch to, OK, I'm going to light these buildings and you can see here in a bit that I'm going to like. I'm trying to like tinker with it and see if there's anything to change, but yeah. Um, and that could, yeah, like you said, that could be maybe just the case for the demo, right? You think yes, of something yeah. like uh, that uh, Maxis game, uh, Spore, you know, which yeah, like, yeah. it's early demos were just like, use the, the character creator and see how fun that is. And then we'll, we'll give you the rest of the game later. Uh, maybe that's what they're kind of going for with this, which is smart. Frankly, I think, yeah, on this on the Steam page, it says Disco Dystopica is a chill cyberpunk city builder of your dystopian dreams or nightmares. No goals, no stress, no objectives, just your imagination. Oh, cool. um, OK, so, yeah, it's definitely like a different game. And I'm not I mean, honest, I wouldn't play this for more than like 20, 30 minutes. Um, but I don't know. Sometimes games don't need to. I don't need to play a game for an hour. I can just no, no, build no. a cyberpunk city with good music vibes. 
Um, yeah. I think I can that's see exactly what I'm Ryan doing Gosling here. staring into the <laughs> rain if I look close enough. Yeah, what a movie. Um, so I'm, I am I took it to the max. I zoomed out as much as I could, and I just wanted to light the whole city. Uh, and I, it's satisfying. I, don't, I mean, yeah. it's one of those, like, turn brain off, move a mouse, don't do anything <laughs> else type of games. And I, you know, I, I appreciate that. Um, I will say the developer Voids Within has another game. Uh, I don't think it's on Steam Next Fest, but it's called Deer Stalker, and it is a another cyberpunk game, but it's a detective simulator um, set in space. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if these two are connected because they're both coming soon. Um, but yeah, like, I guess if you like this type of cyberpunk, if you like the vibes they're aiming for here, which, like, to be honest, I mean, this is just Blade Runner cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, they have another cyberpunk game that looks similar but is more interactive and telling a story and has goals so like um i'm definitely interested to check out both uh and then yeah i think i mean that'll do us for dystopica there i'll, I'll, I'll let a little bit play uh as we fade out because there's a photo editor that kind of that i kind of tinker with um because that's really the point of the game it's just build a cool city and i guess take cool photos which i'm i'm cool with that's what i do in cyberpunk 2077 already yeah yeah, cool. that's going to do us for today's like uh, Steam Next Fest preview, I guess. Yeah, uh, three I mean, games. This, this is there's so much there's going to be so much more on Monday that we uh, don't know what's going to be there. I mean, that's the fun thing about Steam Next Fest is like games will sort of bubble up and be really popular and like surprise people. So I'm always I'm always excited to see what comes out of that, uh, which which kicks off Monday. Yeah. And there's yeah, like you mentioned, there's always a ton of demos. You can't possibly play them all. Um but these are there's three that we got to play ahead of time and we wanted to highlight them because we thought they were cool. Um, so if you're interested in checking them out more uh, after watching this, definitely go to uh, Steam Next Fest and show the uh, devs some love by downloading their demos. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for joining us today, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye.